are here through Community Navigator. This is the Brown Bag series, and we're going to be focusing on graphic design and branding. So we're using Canva, but first I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Christina Robin. I work for Community Navigator, the Southern Colorado Small Business Development Center, and Southern Colorado Innovation Link. They're all housed in our facility here in the downtown office. And my background consists of five years working in broadcast news uh, within videography, media, and marketing, which is what I service all of those three entities for currently. Okay, so we're doing graphic design and branding, but we're going to be utilizing Canva. So Canva is, in my opinion, the more user-friendly version of Photoshop. Right, I use it, my mom uses it, everybody can access it, and it's basically what you make of it. We're gonna go through a lot of those features today. And if you look at the screen, this is kind of the overview of some of the offerings that Canva provides. And what I'm going to do is walk you through the steps initially and kind of give you some tips and tricks of what I use for graphic designing purposes. And then we're actually gonna go into Canva and I'm gonna show you what it looks like to make a marketing flyer. Today we're just gonna be marketing an event and we'll, we'll do that in a little bit. But uh, if you guys have questions, you're more than welcome to put them in the chat or raise your hand. But at the end, I'm gonna open up the floor for Q&A. So if you wanna wait till then, I will make sure to answer all of those for you. Okay, so we're gonna go through tips and tricks. We're gonna go through the Canva design space and then we are going to create your own branding kit. So that does kind of look a little different. You do have to have Canva Pro for that, but like I said, it's more user-friendly than Photoshop. Photoshop is about, can be like $90 a month, right? It just is dependent on what subscription you have. It's different for students and small businesses, but Canva Pro is $12.99 a month. So I think that that's a little bit more efficient for your bank account if you're not professional. So first of all, principles of design. You want to make sure you are utilizing all of these. Behind me, it says balance, emphasis, movement, pattern. You want that continuity and you want to really make sure that you're emphasizing the right, the right uh, words on your flyers, on all of your marketing material. You want to be very consistent with what you use and when you kind of go into the branding element, which will be at the end of this slideshow, you'll understand like why these are also pertinent to your business. Okay, so marketing non-negotiables. This is very much so dependent on what your organization is and your business, but you always want to be thinking about the who, the what, the when, and the where. Especially for advertising an event, that's very important. Um, for instance, the SBEC, we always have the logo up there. We always have the date, time, phone and email, and the location, not just the address. We'll probably put it where it is. For instance, next Tuesday, we have an event and it's called Startup Pueblo. That's a Bruce Ale House. So I usually put our partner logo on there as well. That's really important. You need to be thinking about your sponsorships, the people who are supporting you. Like I said, partners, all that information needs to be on there. And what I found to be super helpful is I create a checklist that I go through every single time for the different organizations that I help with their marketing to make sure that all of that information is on all of my marketing material, whether that be a Facebook cover, an Instagram post, or a marketing flyer for an event. Okay, so. Less is always more. A lot of people start off and they'll make something and just throw lots of color onto it, lots of logos, lots of pictures. That's great, but use them sparingly. White space is your friend. And like I said, if you want something to stand out, one of those earlier tips that we have earlier is emphasis. So maybe you have one phrase that's in color or one image that's super bright, but you wanna make sure that you're you're kind of thinking in terms of looking at it quickly and picking up those key factors because you're not necessarily going to have people reading through the entire flyer every single time.
time, so you want them to see those pertinent, uh, what would you say, like maybe the title or the date, or like sometimes like we'll have like the QR code in a different color, just to make sure like what they need to see is like in front of their eyes first. Can I stop for a second? Yeah, do you have a question? Yeah, the video is off. Do we need to, is that okay? Excuse us. Did it just turn on? Yes, it did. Did that last time? All right, sorry about that. So let's get started. We're actually going to wait a second before we go into Canva, but the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an account. If you haven't already created an account before, I want you to go into canva.com and then go follow those few steps. You're just gonna have to put in your name, your email address. You'll probably have to confirm your email address if you want to follow along with us. If not, I'm going to actually go into my Canva account in a second and show you all these steps. And then once we're actually into Canva, you're gonna have literally millions of options for templates. They have everything from designing t-shirts to Instagram posts to flyers. It's literally endless. It's very cool. You can make your own logo with Canva, but um, yeah, we'll do that in a second. And then we're gonna create what type of template you want to do. Today, like I said, we're gonna be doing a business event flyer. And now you are ready to design. Okay, so I'm going to Go into my Canva. Let's see if there's a better place I can do this. All right, so we're gonna start here actually. Once you have an account, this is what your Canva is gonna look like. Everybody can see that? Thumbs up? Good? Okay, so we're gonna go into the search bar, but I've already clicked on all templates. So let's say once I click on Canva, home, this is what it look, look, looks like. And then on the left hand side, there's going to be a template option, which will pop up in a second. There we go. And this is where you find literally probably hundreds of thousands of different options, which is awesome. It saves you a lot of time. So if you're not a super creative person, this is a super great solution for your business. Okay, so right here, I'm gonna just type in business flyer. All right, the first thing that I'm going to use is just this first one that pops up and I clicked on it. Now I'm going to press customize this template. Okay, so I think this is kind of where I'm gonna start saying if you want to ask questions, please put them in the chat at the end. But for right now, I'm gonna go through all the little features. If you want me to expand on one or you didn't hear one of what I said, please put it in the chat and Jacqueline is manning that right now and she'll let me know. But again, I'll tell you when I'm ready for questions at the end. So right here, templates. If you don't like this one and you're in the middle of editing it, you can just go ahead and change it. Let's say, mm, I don't like that and I want it to be more girly or I don't know, floral. We're gonna go happy social media day. You could have the like floral, like what I said, kind of grungy, whatever. Whatever you think that your business is, you can literally just type that in the search bar and it'll come up with options for you. So this is a really good option because it has a couple pictures right here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this woman and I'm gonna put a frame over her. So the next underneath templates is the elements tab right here. You can see there's literally like guys, there's thousands of different options, so it's like kind of hard to tell you everything all at once. So I'm gonna just show you the key things that I use that I think are really beneficial. So you go in and I'm gonna press frame. So I'm gonna pick this circle and I'm gonna get rid of her. She's great, but we don't need her today. And then I'm gonna move this circle over here. And then I'm gonna go into my uploads and I'm going to take this picture and I'm gonna drop it in there and it's going to make a circle for me immediately. It's gonna fit her perfectly. Let's say I wanna adjust that and kind of play around with the size. If I double click on here, I can remove her from the background, detach the image, 
And then let's say that's a little too bright for me. I don't love that. I'm gonna go into the upper right hand corner and I'm gonna change the transparency. So let's say I want her to be the background. I'm gonna drag this over, make her bigger, right click, send to back. Now she's our background, okay? And then if I want to make that, let's say blue, okay? I don't know why you would want it to be blue, but let's say that's what you're doing for your branding. I'm gonna adjust the tint a little bit. I guess that's not really blue, but this is where you start to mess with all the settings of the picture. So just to kind of show you where I went for that, the upper left hand corner next to all of these tabs is where you press edit image, and then you can do all these adjustments. But what I did want to show you that I think is super cool, I'm gonna bring her forward again, or bring her to the front, and this is why I pay for Canva Pro, like what I was talking about earlier, that's $12.99 a month. You go into edit image, instead of spending hours on removing a background, you just press background remover and it will get rid of everything behind her. So then you can use it like it's something that you spent a lot of time clipping out because that's really difficult to do. If you've tried to do it before, if you tried to make a Snapchat sticker, you know how hard it actually is. So this is a lifesaver. And then I can kind of show you some other templates that we've made before. So actually, we'll, we'll go back to that in a second, sorry. But that's like one of the really cool features that I love using Camber Pro for. So we're gonna go backspace on that. And then going back to the elements tab, um, like you could literally type in just like shapes and it'll come up with like thousands of different things. Like there's all kinds of other stuff in here that you can pay for. If you do pro, you get a lot of the kind of prettier ones. So that's also another reason that I like to get the pro version. So you just get really creative here. And I think that this is a pretty unique software just because it already has all these templates for you. So if you wanna change just a few things, you can. If you wanna change everything or start from scratch, you can do that too. And then this is kind of where you find all of that. And the text, element is right here or you can just kind of copy and paste like let's say you have a document that you've created you have a press release oftentimes i'll go in there copy one sentence paste it on and then i'll edit the font up here just like how you would in a word document aligning it to the center to the left to the right the size there's the typographies and then you can upload your own photos in here kind of what i was showing you but really cool part about Canva is they have all these stock photos that you can use as well. So let's say I want to use this one, right? I'm able to use that for all my marketing purposes. So I don't actually have to go out and take pictures every single time I want to make a marketing flyer. All right. Now we're going to go back into this. Can we ask another question, please? Yes. Are you recording somewhere besides this? No, we have the one. Okay. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So why branding your business matters? So we've gone through Canva, we kind of understand how to create things on your own, but to actually get good at it and make sure people remember your business is to build brand loyalty. And the only way you can do that is through building your brand kit. So this is one of the examples that I use. This is a brand kit that we've created for the Small Business Development Center. You can see right here that all of our colors that we use for every single flyer, and these are the only colors that we use, are up here, and all of our hex colors are listed. And then I obviously included our logos and the different fonts that we use, which are different between our headings, subheadings, and the body. But first of all, let's touch on why branding is important. So branding keeps consistency. And when you are consistent, people think of your business, right? So you're gonna be using the same shapes, same fonts and colors in every single thing that you do. And branding as a whole is kind of your long-term plan. Your marketing efforts, maybe that's something people remember for a week. But if your brand is effective and what it, do, it does what it's supposed to do, people should remember it five years from now. And maybe let's say that everything that you do on your website is blue, okay? even. Even the colors of your pictures that you've taken, headshots, they have a blue hue to it. Next time somebody sees a blue hue picture, they might think of your brand. So these are all the different things that you can do to structure structures people's minds to think about 
your business first and keep it forefront. So, you know, once it's time to say you have a business where you create and they think that, okay, I want to go get something for my niece's Christmas gift, they're going to think of you first. You also use it because you want to inspire people, create value and create a visual identity. And we're actually building our brand. You want to avoid using super fancy fonts because a lot of times they're hard to read and you also need to be thinking about that consistency. You probably don't want to upload a different font every single time you go into a different software. So when you're setting up your brand kit in Canva, which we're going to go back to in a second, I'm going to actually show you how to do. It's kind of helpful to maybe go into Microsoft Word or something else that you use often to see if that font is compatible with the other softwares that you use. So like I said, it saves you a little bit of time. And you also want to make sure that if you're confused about what colors to use, actually, give me one second. We're gonna go back in, going back and forth, sorry. Let's do this first. We're gonna go home. And this is the brand kit that I had just showed you for the SBDC. This is how you make it. And then you do have to have Canva Pro to do this, but it's pretty cheap. I think it's worth it. All right, so on the left-hand side, you're gonna go into tools, and then underneath tools is brand. And you're gonna press add new. And then you're gonna click on brand kit. We're gonna call this brown bag series. And this is where you start to actually create your brand kit. So I want to upload my logos, right? I'm going to upload my logo, which is literally just a brown bag. And then I'm going to go into brand colors. And let's say these are my colors, right? Like this weird green, and then this purple, and then maybe we want a white, and then we want a black in there. But all those you should probably kind of know beforehand based off of what your logo is. What your logo's colors are should also be your brand colors. And then this is where you choose your fonts. And you can also select certain sizes for them. So when you go in, so this is where this gets cool. You go back into your templates. And then I'm going to go into styles. Okay. This is the template that we were working on. I'll show you how to get back to your projects in a second. But we're gonna go into styles and we're gonna go up to this little drop down arrow and I'm gonna click on brown bag series and I'm gonna continue to click on it until I find a style that I like. And it's just gonna shuffle those colors for me every single time. So this is why it's really effective for you to use a branding kit because it saves you time instead of having to go in and be like, oh, I need this to be this hex color and having to type in six different numbers and letters so it matches your branding. This just does it automatically for you. So we're gonna keep alternating these until I find something that I like. Okay, that looks kind of crazy, but let's just say I like that. <laughs> and then we're gonna go into the typography as well. And then this will do the same thing for you. So like you can do, um, like a drop down. I'll just show you because all. So this is the SBDCs one that I showed you earlier. I'm gonna click on that. That's gonna be the colors. And then these are the fonts that we use for everything with the SBDC. I'm just gonna click on that and it's gonna adjust them automatically so I don't have to do the extra work. So just saves you some time, saves you a headache. And then this is where you can generate your QR code. So let's go into the SVDC's website. Click on that. All right, so you literally just come up. I'm gonna copy that, go into the template, paste it here, generate QR code. There you go. You can change the color of this. You can do whatever you want with it. But let's just say I'm gonna drag it to the upper 
right hand corner and leave it there. Then people can scan instead of having to type in your code every single time. It makes it a lot more effective, especially when you're starting to put in, maybe you have a poster or something, you're starting to put in to newsletters. If somebody wants to scan that on their phone, on their desktop, I think it saves a lot of time and it's kind of becoming the standard to add a QR code to any marketing material. And one more thing I wanted to show you is the positioning tool is very helpful. So you click on this bar up here, sorry. And let's say I want this to be centered right there. I want it to be in the middle right there. So all of these tools just really help you save time and energy. And the more that you play around with it, the more that you'll understand it. So we'll go back in here. And that's why I say that paying for Canva Pro is really helpful. You get a lot more images, you get a lot more elements, it helps you with designing, it helps you with the background remover, which is like, in my opinion, worth every single time, and to access your brand kit, okay? So if you wanna make your life easier and you don't have somebody who you can hire as a full-time creative director, this is probably for you. All right. So I'm ready for questions. If you have any, you can put them in the chat. And those of you who are here in person, if you want to ask them, I am all here for you, but go ahead. Yes, yes. Oh, we, oh, have, we a have a question, question from Joseph, and, and he wants, he wants to go over uploading photos, photos from your, from your own content for your, your yeah. Um, Just from like your website, is that what he said? Your like events, things yeah. like that. Okay, so basically like you can save anything off of online, but let's say that you went and took some pictures for the day and you uploaded them into your files, and you're just gonna come over here you're gonna to go to uploads and you're gonna press upload files. This laptop that we're using, I'm not really sure if it has anything saved on it. So like, let's go into Soho SVDC. I can right click this and press save image as. Sorry if I'm going fast, I'll slow down. But it's gonna save as a PNG. A PNG is what logos look like. It has a transparent background. So if it saves as a PNG, that you know it's gonna have kind of like a logo design versus a JPEG. So we're gonna save that. We're gonna go back in here, upload files. I think that's saved to downloads. All right, open that up. And then it'll drop in there automatically. And then you can just click on it and it'll pop up or you can drag it over, whatever works for you. And um, something that is also really cool is like, because not everybody knows how to do this stuff, We'll get logos like, let's say this, and then you can go into the edit image background remover and it'll create it as a PNG for you. So if you have like a colored background, it's not gonna have like a big white square around it, which I love. Is that the difference between JPEG and PNG? Is the background? A PNG saves with a transparent background. And, and a JPEG does not, just as is. But you can save, it's just, it's kind of dependent. Like you can save a PNG with a background as well. But um, this is also what we need to go through. Say I'm ready, I know this looks crazy guys. <laughs> we'll make, and then also something really cool. So we can come over here, say I don't like the way this is spaced because it looks kind of funky. I'm gonna adjust the line spacing and the letter spacing, pull them apart a little bit more, make it smaller. Okay, I'm ready to export this and share it on all my social medias. I'm going to come up to the upper right hand corner and this is where I can download it. And then this is where you get the selections of whether you want to save it as a PNG, JPEG. And it actually gives you like the reasoning of why you would save it. JPEG says, says that it's best for sharing. So if I'm going to email something to someone, I usually save it as a JPEG. If I'm uploading something to the website, it's probably getting saved as a PNG. And then the PNG has a transparent background option. So if I download it like this, it might look kind of crazy because this isn't really meant to be a transparent background. And then we'll go back into my downloads. Yeah, so see? Does that make sense? earlier but I just really believe like branding is super important because 
of that long-term value. So the more that you implement the same fonts and colors and logos, the more people are gonna think about you. And as small business owners, it's really difficult to stay at the front of mind <laughs> for consumers because they have so many options in this day and age. And people's, I think people's attention span is probably a solid seven seconds, right? Like we're dwindling down to that of a goldfish, probably because of TikTok. So you gotta stay focused on that. <laughs> Remember, like what I said earlier, Emphasizing certain things is what's most important because you realistically only have people's attention span for a few seconds. Can you talk about the QR code features and specifically if uh, the QR code option is only in the pro version? QR code, I'm fairly certain, is only, is actually accessible for everybody. Mm -hmm. It should be. Um, the pro version offers the brand kit, the background remover, and then just more options for templates, uploads, pictures, elements. As far as I know, um, it's been a while since I haven't had the pro version, so if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. There's also other things online that you can generate QR codes with. So if you look things up, you can usually find it. Um, something else that I did want to mention for today is that you can get on Wix and they have a logo generator. So instead of trying to make your own, you can just type in a few things, like let's say you're a yoga business and you're a yoga business that does goat yoga. I don't know if you guys know about that, but it was a thing. You literally type in the word goat yoga and it'll generate a couple options for you. That's a really cool way to make a logo if you don't have one already. Um, also, this is a big one. Going back in to our brand kit, Or actually, let's just say in the templates. All right. So let's say I want to change the colors of this animation right here, but I want it to be my brand colors, and it gives me those options. I can go down to photo colors and it's loading these right now. So let's say this Levita Mercantile is my brand colors, and I want to change this woman to match them. Then I'm gonna go in, and I'm going to click on the auto-populated colors that Canva does, and change the colors so she can match Levita Mercantile. And that's also something super helpful. Like say, say that you had your logo generated for you by like a random freelancer online and you don't know what colors to use. You don't know what hex colors are using. Then you can go and upload it to Canva and click on these to figure out what to put in your brand kit. And then if you just go to like document colors, it has the hex code right here and you just copy and paste that into your brand kit. Um, there's also something called color dropper So you upload an image into, uh, this is imagecolorpicker.com. I'm gonna upload an image just to kind of show you guys. So you press user image, we'll go and upload a Imagecolorpicker.com? Yeah. So. I'm gonna upload that PNG that I just saved from Canva. And down here, it shows all your hex colors. And then you can save them. So it actually just gives you the option to completely save it, but this is a good way to like save your palette. And like, I guess if you don't wanna pay for the brand kit on Canva, then you can use this as well. But the reason I just kinda say to use the brand kit on Canva is because if you're using it to make your marketing material, it's a lot, it's a lot more effective and saves a lot of time when you can just shuffle those colors for you and the different fonts automatically. But um, the hex colors are up here, and then I'm gonna put this in the chat for you guys. Okay. Is there a limit on how many colors you can have in a in a 
Brandy Kate. Brandy Kate. I would say six is the minimum that you should have. Yeah. Six is probably a good number to go with at the beginning. And I would stay between like six and eight, just because if you have like every color in the rainbow, people probably aren't gonna really remember you, you know? <laughs> and you wanna make sure that you have that continuity. Consistency is key when it comes to branding and small businesses. Do we have any other questions, thoughts, comments? Go ahead. Okay, so I was given my brand kit just on a plain sheet. Mm -hmm. So how, how am I dragging that over to Canva? Did you already go through it? We can go back through it. Yeah, so you just go back in to your brand kit. And, and how do I get there? Let's see. So underneath all of these, we'll, we'll just start from the home page again. Okay. Oh, I, under brand. Yeah. Okay. And then she gave the you the hex kit. colors? Yes. So then you would just copy and paste those hex colors in under the color portion. Okay, gotcha. Thank yeah. you. I, I, where we were at. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And it's the same thing where you can upload your logos in there. Right. Yeah, you literally just like click the plus and then right there. Any more questions? Yes. Okay. In your experience in doing these, is it better to use generic pictures with people or like anime pictures or I guess car maybe graphics, cartoon pictures instead? Can you ask them what their business is? Sure. Um, I think it's really important to recognize before you add- Mortgages. Mortgages. Okay. In that case, I honestly would say it's up to you and maybe it's up to the identity that you're trying to frame for your business because I'm just gonna use this as an example. Our startup week that we're hosting in September, I'm using all animated characters, but it's supposed to be a lively, fun event. It's kind of focusing on the young entrepreneurs. That's the type of demographic that we're going to promote. If you're talking about mortgages, let's be realistic. You're probably focusing on people who have a, an income that they can afford that, right? So you might have a demographic of people who are in between 30, 50, so you just have to know who your target audience is first before you make those decisions because I use a variety of both dependent on who I'm servicing in that moment. So if I'm doing something with this SBDC community navigator, I'm gonna use real people. I'm gonna use pictures like this. Um, also, once you complete all these projects, they save automatically and then you can make folders kind of like how you would um, Google Drive, whatever. So we'll go into this. But yeah, if you, if you look back here, like I have all the different things labeled for skill, SBDC, community navigator. So community navigator is working with the Latino chamber for an event that we're hosting soon. And this is the picture that I use because we're actually servicing real people and we're focusing on kind of the professional realm. So you're probably not going to be using cartoon figures unless that's your vibe, right? Because look, like branding is your tone, your vibe, your attitude. You really just have to think about it at an individual level. And that's kind of where I guess we should go back to this and talk that we are offering consultations through the Latino Chamber. So if you guys want to scan this QR code, you can go fill out our client intake form and then you can put in the notes section what you're looking for, a little more information, a little help. Um, and over here, go back one. So this is kind of what I can also help with is if you want something specialized for your business and to go through that and do the market research and industry analysis to really kind of figure out your niche and your unique business, who your unique client is, then we can actually start going through like what social media campaigns you should be doing, what they should look like, um, how you should set up an investor deck. Like you can do that through Canva as well. Like there's presentation op options instead of just using PowerPoint for everything. Um, this is actually really cool. If anyone's interested in this, Instagram carousel posts are becoming a very big thing. As you slide, it's a con 
continuation of the same picture across like five different panels or three different panels, just kind of depending on how much content that you actually have. So if you're interested in that, you can contact me. My information's right here for those of you in person. My card's in the back. And like I have been going through all of this basic graphic design, if you just need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one talk, we can set that up as well. Are you doing uh, consults or with the chamber, or do they have a variety of people doing it? Are you not sure? I will get back to you on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Email me. We'll do. Okay. <laughs> um, go ahead. There are some pictures that come. I use the free version, so I'm wondering if there is a difference with the. Um, I wonder if there's a difference with the pro because um, there could, my logo is a sheep mm -hmm. and I dress it sometimes like for the winter or yeah. I'll put a hat on it and I, I try to look for gra hat graphics or cartoon type things that, that I can manipulate the colors. I notice some things you can manipulate and change the color line mm -hmm. and then some things you cannot. Is there a way to tell when you're through that's a really good question because I've, I've dealt with that issue a ton when you come over to elements and like let's say I just yeah so you like click on this shape yeah. and it allows you to, yeah no I know what you're talking about um as far as I know you don't actually have that option to mm -hmm. see it until you click on it okay but if you want to sit here and look through my canva when you're done to see if the pro version has a couple more options that would be effective for your logo you're more than welcome to but you're definitely you recommend going pro I do just because it saves literally hours for me because I'm pumping these out nonstop. So if you're sitting there and you're deciding like, hey, I'm gonna spend like five hours on my marketing today and I'm gonna try to get like 10 pieces out of this five hours, then you're probably not gonna maybe be going through and changing like all the colors, copying and pasting in your hex numbers every single time. Like you're gonna just wanna do the style, like automatic generation where it filters through for you. And like the more, and it's cool because it has like the shuffle feature. So it's like you're gonna find something that works for you eventually. And like let's say like I like this, but I don't like that. Then I'm just gonna go in and change the background to white or something. Can you go back if you mm -hmm. to compare? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm just pressing the back arrow. Now, if you make a flyer and it's kind of somewhat standard, and then you change it for a certain season or or whatever, can you save the new one under? different name mm -hmm. so you can access the old one. Yes, All right, come over here, and then they have the three dots. So I'm in my projects section. These are all the things that I've worked on. Like I said, they always save automatically. And then I just come up and I would make a copy. And then this saves it, right? So you can do your copy. Um, something else that Pro also offers is that you can do a resize. So let's say I have this as a flyer, but I want it to be an Instagram post. You're gonna come up here. And then this is also cool because you can say copy and resize. You don't always have to go back, but I'm gonna just resize it just for today and change it to an Instagram post. And then you just press resize. And then yeah, you kind of like change the size of this or not. But yeah, that's where I think like it's very effective and helps on saving time because you're marketing you should always be repurposing your content just as a means of like saving time energy money so doing this and going in between the different um, options that they have for the resizing and using those for all of the different social medias and platforms that you use is very effective I have one more go ahead I make um, I make cards to put my product on mm -hmm. and bag package it and I I do like a two by three, and I manipulated it so that it looks like it's printed on both sides. Yeah. But it takes a whole lot of lining up to do that. Is there a way to do that where it would be a lot easier to get a front and a back on the card? Like, do you mean, okay, I might need to hear that question again. Like, if you take an eight by 11, um, yeah. I'll make, two rows, well, two columns, and then three in a row. 
and you know two by three. Yeah, two and by then, three. Okay. Um, yes. And I have I would like to print a card that has a front and a back. So and usually I play with it until it lines up, but it's never quite right. Like how do you Oh, okay, okay. I make display cards, I guess is what I'm saying. I'm yeah. sorry. So there is should be a ruler feature. Like because you see how when you pull all this off mm -hmm. it still has the divides right here. Mm -hmm. size mm -hmm. like let's say that you know it's gonna be like an eight by fifteen or whatever then you would probably be like I want it split up two or three but let's let's take some time on that Molly will shoot you an email okay. if anybody else is interested in that let me know. Go ahead. So my question is I have a PowerPoint that I have put together. I would like to change the background on it. Can you do that in Canva with your uh, if you have the brand logo set up? Um, are you aware? Can you change it easily, or do you have to leave? Is it? the background attached to the logo? Because you could just do yeah. the background remover and then go in and actually like change the background on the presentation. So you can do that in Canva. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I want to. Yeah, they have the presentation option as well. So it's just an impression. Like literally anything that you want to make. <laughs> so cool. It is really cool. Yeah, I just I like what it. I presented last time. So. Um, okay. Sorry, we're getting some really weird designs. I'm just clicking on the first things that I see. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so right here, like it already has a background on here. Um, and I always the way that you access it is you double click it. Like I don't want that There's one. All your so designs right there. You were gonna erase about. it. What did you say? So when you erased the background, the line showed up that you were talking about. Two by two. Oh, the the ruler. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah. See now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there, I think there's also a way that you can like. There is a way that those show up. So when you're moving things around within it, it stays, and you don't have to like crop it. Oh. Okay. That's what it, she's trying to say. Manipulate those. Yeah. So. Um, are you just saying like if you wanted any background or like, just show me how to do it? Um, I just want a different background. It's for the female founders. Okay, then I would just go into photos and you can literally just like you see there's background right here. Okay, there's literally so many options. Set as image background. So if it's a, a whole PowerPoint is what I was thinking. It say it's mm -hmm. say it's 15 slides. Yeah. Then would it just you change would... all of them? Because I think a PowerPoint looks better if the pages are, are some similarity but variety. What I would, 
what I would tell you is I would go into like the templates and find one that you like, and if like most of those templates for PowerPoint presentations, like the pitch decks that I was telling you about earlier, will have a stream of eight different slides that right. have like the same branding basically, but just different designs. So kind of like the designer tool in PowerPoint, mm -hmm. um, which auto populates it for you. So maybe PowerPoint is more effective for what you're trying to do. Okay. Which um, we have time. Do you want to see that? I'd like to see it. I don't know if there's other questions yes. to be. Is that okay? Yeah. I'm here. Is there anything else in the chat? Or are we okay? We're okay. So manually in the past. The reason that this is, yeah. So like, um, you do have to actually put in some content first before this starts to work for you. And I have it. Yeah. So then you have to do this through Office 365 through your browser, not PowerPoint that you actually have uploaded. So right. you go in to design, and then it should have the designer option. Oh. So this is where you start to. Get, do you see what I mean? Like, get this, these options for you. See more designs than you're in like right now. Yeah. Okay. And, which is literally the best time saver ever. That's obviously what I use for today. Um, we discovered that the other day and it saved us a lot of time. <laughs> Can I throw one more out? Um, yeah. Canva allows you to basically buy print product as well. Um, have yeah. you tried that? And would you mind showing people those options? I haven't purchased through Canva, but you can, and the reason I know that is because I've designed a couple t-shirts for people, and then I've had them printed off through Canva, so I can kind of show you, even though I'm not completely sure. So, I think that we can probably type in t-shirt. Oh no, let's go back in. something that you can actually print like they'll do this for cards and t-shirts um, like trifles things that you usually would get like printed and then they'll send them to you like it, it should have the option right here where you just be like well let's say I want 30 of these right and I want this to be the front side back side and like let's say like you can add another page and have the back side be something different and select that but then this is actually like how you order continue should probably have like your information saved in there from your Canva Pro account as well so you can just automatically check out but that saves a ton of time it's pretty sweet would definitely recommend doing that if you're interested in doing like some graphic designing for your business or just to have some safe merch so you can just print a few things to give away at an expo or something yeah yeah like if you yeah that's actually a really good idea yeah instead of a whole huge order of 50 for a if you just wanted like 10 trifolds and a couple bookmarkers or some cheap like t-shirts to give out, you can do pretty much everything. Do you or know stickers. how these compare to like other places? Um, I don't know, I've heard of this Hi. difference. I'm sorry to talk to hello. Hello. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Vistaprint? Yeah. You have to do my business cards. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily my niche, but yeah. she can probably tell you more about that. I would assume that it's all the same, just maybe it's a okay. different quality of paper, like if you have something specific that you want it to feel a certain way, or like branding also is really important because you want it to like align with your packaging as well. Like you want to have that web and social media continuity with like what you're physically giving people. Mm -hmm. So like let's say like you have like a bug so business or something like that, you probably want to be giving people things on soft paper. I don't know. I was just going to have my think about it. If you, um, for the pro, can you only put one branding kit on there? No, you can do like multiple. Yeah, I have probably 50. Oh. Okay. And this is one of two accounts or three accounts that we use. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty limitless. So if you have multiple businesses, like that's yeah. also. 
can make your life a lot easier. Yeah. Use that. Um. Any other questions? Getting good. Okay. I'm gonna end this. Everybody, thank you so much for coming today. I'm gonna go and show you this one more time in case you want to set up a consultation. And that's through Community Navigator. So Jacqueline, tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe that it would be free. Yes, free consultation. We love that word, that's important. <laughs>